Hello, here's a short video on uh, trade and the U.S. Uh, what's called the uh, trade deficit sometimes or the current account and the capital account. Okay, so I just looked up U.S. trade deficit, which is something you hear uh, a lot in the news. So here's something from the president. Uh, here's something about China. Here's uh, changing the trap. Here's one. U.S. trade deficit drops as exports hit a record high. So first of all, um, the one there's a lot of misconceptions out there about trade. First of all, um, countries do not trade. So a um, person in one country or a country doesn't trade with another country. A company does. So for example, here is the WITS. Um, this is the World Bank's trade database. So it's got all kinds of good information. I picked Belgium, right? So it tells you their imports and their exports. Uh, you can see they kind of go together. Uh, these are the products that they import and export. This is the amount of money that's that's going back and forth across their borders. Uh, and then this is by product. So you can actually use this if you had a product that you want to sell to, to a developed country like Belgium. You can uh, come in here and uh, see if they're already importing it. And if not, they're, that's a that's an opportunity for you. Okay. So anyway, what what happens with trade is, uh, say a, a company in the United States wants to sell a product that's made in Belgium. Okay, so for the United States, it's going to be an import uh, that the amount of money that they spend on that, and then for Belgium, it's going to be amount of it's about many exports, right? But because we count these by countries, it looks like the country itself is is exporting, when it's really just the, a company, right? And that gets a little further uh, confusing, because a company might be from say Germany, like BMW, and they might sell, uh, they might make the product in the United States and sell it in another place, right? So this happens a lot with a company like say Apple. Who puts uh, you know lots of different products um, from all over the world, and then uh, puts them together in China, and then sells the product to the United States or Canada or Mexico or wherever, right? So the trade situation is not a one-to-one -one thing, um, and uh, so further, let's look at the real GDP. So the real GDP is seventy for the United States, seventeen point three trillion dollars. Okay, so that's where it is. Um, and what we've learned in this class is that where did I get that number? Well, I got it from adding consumer spending plus investment plus government spending uh, plus net exports. Where did I get net exports from? I got the exports minus the imports. So for the United States, this is um, we export 2.2 trillion and import right around 2.7 trillion. Okay, so this means that companies are buying stuff. Uh, to sell, like in the Southwest, you know, companies like Fry's and Walmart buy a lot of tomatoes and stuff from Mexico. Uh, we also export a lot of stuff. Firms like Disney and uh, Apple and other uh, service-based firms are going to uh, export quite a bit. Okay, so this number uh, is is going to be a negative number because the imports is higher than the exports. We actually have the the real number. So let's look at the real number here. So uh, this is this is the this is the uh, the difference, the net exports. Okay, uh, now let's actually look a little further back. Okay, so back in the quote good old days, the you know, U.S. was a net exporter, right? What was going on there? Well, there wasn't as much competition, right? Um, starting right around the 1980s, though, we entered this new phase of globalization. We started importing more than we export. And if you look back at the the U.S. GDP, it was actually doing very well during this period of time, and you'll see. Uh, that our net exports went way back up because our import number went down um, and our export number went up a little bit Okay, because we weren't buying as much stuff because people had lost their jobs and all of that that we learned about. So right now it's 637. Okay, so six, 637 um, billion. Okay, so the real GDP is 17.3 trillion and the net export number is uh, point or is it, yeah well it's point six three seven trillion okay because I just convert that guy there now remember um, consumer spending right around sixty eight percent somewhere in there sixty six let's say around um, so the bulk of the U S G D P is the consumer spending okay some of this and some of this um, let's see what what percentage this is so seventeen point three per or trillion over 0.637 trillion, the trillions will cancel out. Let's see what we, oh, you know what? I'm doing my, my math wrong there. I have the 
Oh, let's fix that. What I, need, what I meant to say was it's huh, uh, point six three seven trillion uh, over that. Uh, that'll give us the, the percent, okay, of the of the GDP. So uh, take this point six three seven divided by seventeen point three, and I get three. 0.6%. So if you look at just numbers here, it's, it's tempting to say, well, if we want to improve the, G, the U.S. economy, we need to uh, export more and import less, right? Um, but in the scale of things, this is this is less than 4% of the whole economy. This is really not a big deal, but we think about it a lot. We do. Okay, now uh, let's say that a U.S. firm uh, imports some stuff from Belgium. Okay, so Belgium is going to send uh, the goods or services to the United States, okay, uh, to the U.S. firm, really. Uh, and the U.S. firm is going to pay them for this stuff, but they're going to pay them in dollars, okay. And so this is what you're seeing here. This is the negative number, the capital uh, flowing out there, right? Uh, but then, and so then the goods and services are sold here. But, but in Belgium... They don't use dollars, so they have to do something with the dollars from that purchase. So what they can do, often they'll buy bonds, okay? And the reason they buy bonds is because they can get 2.6 or, you know, whatever the percentage is now. Um, you know, in, in different economic times, they can get 5%, whatever. They can, they can make a return on their investment, okay? They could also transfer those back into euros if they want, okay? But I'd rather take this than... Than this, right? Because this is just gonna—I'm just gonna get the equivalent in euros, right? I'm not not gonna get any return. But here, if I can hold on to the money for a year or so, I can get 2.6 percent. If I'm a huge company, that makes a big difference, right? Another thing I can do, let's say I'm this Belgium firm and, and my sales are just going up and up and up. I can say, you know what? We want to increase this, so we're gonna take those dollars and we're gonna advertise back in the United States. So if you think about some of the commercials you've seen, look up where the companies are from. A lot of them really aren't from around here. Uh, an, an example would be uh, if you watch Golden State Warriors basketball, they have on their shirts, um, pull that up, they have a corporation, uh, logo uniform. So you can pull it up here. Whoops, there it was. Okay, so it's this, it's this Japanese company. Uh, oh, it's not even there. Should have loaded this up earlier. Okay. Whoop, load up. There it is. Okay. So it's this company. Uh, turn off my ad block. Get out of here. Oh, sorry. Caught me with the ad blocker. Anyhow, uh, they paid six hundred million dollars for a three-year deal. I guess I can't show you that. I'm not going to turn off the ad blocker. Anyway, so they might advertise. They might, um, you know, build uh, something or buy something. Okay, so some kind of capital spending. They might buy another company. There's been lots of cases of that. The most famous one recently, S Smithfield. It's the largest pork producer in the world. It was bought out by a Chinese firm. Uh, and they're going to keep it in the United States and just keep producing more and more pork. So a lot of times these, this, the flow of the capital comes back because the Belgian firm or the Chinese firm or wherever they're from realizes, hey, I can make more money. I can increase this and make more. I can make 2.6% on a bond purchase. I can make more here. And so looking at just this part is only half the, uh, the, uh, the equation here. Okay, so here's what's called the balance of payments. Okay, so the the uh, current account balance is mostly net exports. There's some other things in there, but it's mostly net exports. So for the United States, it's a negative number. Okay, so that's what you're seeing here. Let's go back to 2004, but same relationship. Here. The capital flows though, capital flow flows back into the United States. Okay, and why is this actually good? Uh, it's good because it creates jobs, right? Creates and it creates a lot of types of jobs that you're looking for, right? Like uh, uh, white collar jobs, right? Marketing and accounting, things like that. 
Okay, you can actually see where the capital is flowing to. Right, we can see um, is it flowing in or out? Okay, so it looks like other financial services flowing out, uh, public sector capital flowing in. Okay, so looking at just uh, the net exports this is only half the picture. So remember that that money has to flow back in the U.S. and there's a lot of opportunities there for you.